six. Um, so how Norwex has changed my life to begin with, when someone would ask me if I would speak in front of a group before Norwex, my answer would have been no. <laughs> no, I'm okay, because all I'm doing is just sharing my story. Um, both my boys, when they were born, they're now 10 and 14, but when they were born, they were born with infant asthma. So everything in our home had changed from the way that we clean to um, no longer wearing perfume to the fragrance in the shampoo. I went right to baking soda and vinegar because watching your um, children being hooked up to a nebulizer is heartbreaking. So as we know, baking soda and vinegar is not the most effective way to clean, especially in one bathroom with six children. So dad would load up the boys and everyone else into the minivan and they would go on a venture, even if it was just two hours of driving, so I could clean the way that, the only way that I knew how to get everything clean. With fans and vents and windows open in the winter is lovely, but I needed to air it out as much as possible for the boys to be able to breathe when they came home. They both outgrew it between the ages of five and six but the mama bear in me still to this day does not wear perfume <laughs> because I think in my mind that I might somehow harm them, but they're totally fine. Everybody's <laughs> good, we're fine with that. Um, in 2008, uh, Lee and I both lost our jobs. Uh, we worked for uh, Lear Seating and they made seats for General Motors. So we had one customer and GM made it through the Great Depression, but couldn't make it through 2008. Mm. <laughs> I thought for sure. <laughs> mm. uh, we had a pension, we had great insurance, um, we thought we were going to make it, and we didn't. We had to make a quick decision. It was a life-changing event, and we were devastated and right in panic mode. We had one week to figure out if we were going to look for another job, or they were going to send us to college. Because the um, market was so saturated with everybody looking for a job, we decided to go to college. Uh, the closest one that I could go to was 45 minutes away and I went for graphic design. And Lee stayed at home and did online schooling, so we had someone always there at home with the kids. Um, I know where I'm going. <laughs> um, so yeah, so at 40 years old, I graduated college and our youngest started uh, kindergarten. I thought both those things might happen, but not in the same year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I was invited, uh, anyway, I went, I found a job as a graphic designer. So in my mind, it was me going to create things, I'm going to change the world, I'm gonna do public service announcements, I'm gonna feed the pig, it's really gonna be something. That's not what I was doing at all. I was changing the files for the campground down the street. I was um, doing, really icky pictures for the doctor office that he could hand out his pamphlets. It was a very demeaning job. Uh, it was very negative in that office. It was, um, I would cry on Sunday nights because I didn't want to go to work on Monday. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was rough. And when your kids see you so unhappy, it's time to make a change. So in 2011, I went back to factory work. We had a family meeting. And I'm like, I need to go back to factory because that's where the money is and that's where the insurance is and everything's going to be fine. And the little ones were so small, they couldn't really remember factory work, but that meant second shift. And that meant me away from my family again. That meant I didn't have bedtime or any of that. So in 2011, I went back to factory work, worked 12 hours a day, seven days a week for the first year and a half. Um, not the fun mom, <laughs> definitely not that. Um, a year ago, I was invited to four Norwex parties including my sister, and I still made an excuse on not to go for her. <laughs> so I'm just thinking, my best friend had a party, and I'm just thinking of all the excuses on why not to go, because I remember house parties when I was younger, and, or when we had really good jobs. It was, hang this foo-foo thing here, and put your makeup on like this, and I'm not that person at all for any of it. I'm a makeup challenge. I wear it like three times a year. <laughs> um, if it's not a picture of my family, it's not going up on the, on the wall. If it's not handmade, you know. So anyway, um, my girlfriend tagged me in a photo on Facebook and it said, Tracy Daniels, I cleaned the inside of the van windows with these two cloths and water. And I'm like, oh. because at the time, I had window spray and a squeegee and that's how I cleaned the inside of my windows. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? I'm like, okay, I'm going. So I went to the party and Darcy was the consultant and I'm like this the whole time. And I'm like, oh, they're speaking to me. Because even at this time, my children still weren't helping me clean because it was I needed this for this and this for that. So at that party, um, I booked a party, and I got the cleaning paste and the 
corner cloth, scrub cloth. So when I got my stuff and was home, I cleaned everything, top to bottom, and you name it, I couldn't stop cleaning. We went on vacation, I took the stuff with me, and I only had two things. <laughs> <laughs> so my family's like, Mom, you need to sell this. Mom, you need to sell this. I'm like, I don't need another job. I need another job like I need a hole in the head. So I had my party. It was, it was, everything went fine. I got more stuff. I did more cleaning. I'm like, hey, guys, help me clean. So anyway, my family's still, Mom, you need to sell this. Mom, you need to sell this. I'm like, no, I don't. So this one cheers me up, and I'm going to make it through. <laughs> so my nine-year-old and I are going to bed one night. And he said, Mom, I really want you to reconsider selling Norwex. And I'm like, I don't, I'm like, why, well, Kian? And he's like, because I think you can help somebody just like me, Mom. So when your nine-year-old sees the bigger picture and you don't, it's time to listen. So I started selling Norwex. <laughs> I called Darcy and I'm like, okay, you get me. <laughs> She's like, I don't know what to do with you, but okay. <laughs> So anyway, it's been a year and we figured it out. So how Norwex has changed my life. Um, on August 21st, I went to that factory job. And when I punched in, they took me to the office and they said, Tracy, we're downsizing and we don't need you. My boss was crying and I patted him on the arm and I said, this is just what I needed. Mm -hmm. I said, I will be okay. And if you think this is the worst thing that happened to me, you're sadly mistaken. It's the best thing that happened to me. I went to national conference I build a team just in the time in which we have came back. I offer everyone the same opportunity that Norwex gave me. I'm happy to wake up every, every morning. I'm happy to share with someone else. I'm happy for my family. They can help me clean. Um, Norwex has the possibility to send me to Mexico instead of the unemployment line. Because of the factory jobs, that's the only trip they ever sent me. Um, I'm okay standing up here and almost crying in front of you 10 times. <laughs> I'm okay telling you my story. My children are okay that tonight I'm not going to be home for a while because I'm sharing my story. I have a very supportive family. I have mentors who help me along the way all the time. I can message them, I call them, and they're just like, Tracy, you can do it. Um, I have, I'm not afraid of no. If you say no, it's not no to me. It's not no because it doesn't work for you right now. I say no when the Jehovah Witness man knocks at my door. It's nothing against him. <laughs> I love you, have a great day. But please just keep walking. I'm not afraid of no. I'm not afraid. I'm willing to step out of my comfort zone like this. <laughs> Everything's changing. I've built the confidence. So that's just some ways that Norwex has changed for me. And I'm grateful for it. And even though Darcy and I didn't know what we were doing when we began, <laughs> we're at a whole different place now. So that's my story. Mm -hmm.